what is morbidity morbidity is any departure whether subjective or objective from the state of physiological well being in simple words sickness illness or disability three aspects of morbidity are commonly measured frequency frequency in epidemiology means amount amount of disease this is measured in terms of incidence and prevalence these are very important terms in epidemiology second aspect which is measured commonly is the duration of the disease and it is expressed as the average duration per case known as disability rate the third aspect is the severity of the disease and it is measured by a ratio known as case fatality ratio what is the need to measure morbidity at all the needs are to know the disease load in the community so that we can set priorities and plan efficient health services second use is research by comparing the two groups one with a high load of disease and other with a lower load of disease we can identify the differences and these constitute the risk factors one or more of these risk factors may later turn out to be the cause of the disease hence measurement of morbidity is usually the starting point for etiological studies etiological studies means studies which are started for identifying the cause of the disease or etiology of the disease by assessing the disease load at regular intervals we can monitor and evaluate the health services for the disease control measures if the health services and disease control measures are working fine the disease load should gradually decrease incidence is defined as the number of new cases occurring in a defined population during a specified period of time again it's the number of new cases occurring and counted within a defined population and during a specified period of time the formula is this number of new cases in specified population during given time period divided by population at risk into 1000 note the unit of time is essential in expressing a rate an example 100 new cases occurred in a population of 50000 in one year and this is how the incidence was calculated and it came out to be 2 per 1000 population per year remember that incidence refers to only the new cases occurring during the given time period and in a specified population or the population at risk incidence can also be used to measure the spells of the disease or the episodes of the disease in one year per 1000 population this is because some diseases have may have more than one episode in one person in one year for example sore throat diarrhea and so it is important to know the number of spells rather than number of people who have the disease incidence number of spells of sickness starting within the defined period divided by the mean number of people who were exposed to risk in that period into 1000 why do we need to know the incidence in uh, terms of spells of certain diseases because we need to indent the right amount of medication that we will that we will require in the year right in the beginning of the year so that we don't fall, fall short of the drugs for example three episodes of upper respiratory tract infection per child per year has been reported and accordingly the medication are indented for that particular health facility also note that the incidence is not influenced by the duration of the disease 
Incidence is generally used for acute conditions like sore throat, diarrhea, injury, etc. And it measures the rate of new cases in the population. Some special incidence rates need mention here and we would be dealing with the attack rate and secondary attack rate. Attack rate it is usually expressed as percent and not as per thousand and is used mostly when the population is exposed to the disease for a limited period of time for example during an epidemic or outbreaks and it reflects the extent of the epidemic this is the formula number of new cases of the specified disease during a specified time interval divided by the total population which was exposed and was at risk into 100 Secondary attack rate is defined as the number of exposed persons who develop the disease within one incubation period. Why within one incubation period? Because secondary attack rate measures the infectiousness of the agent of the epidemic. So it measures how many of the exposed got the infection from the primary case itself. That is to how many people did the primary case pass on the infection. This is the formula, number of susceptible individuals developing the disease within one incubation time period following the exposure to the primary case divided by total number of those who were not only exposed but also susceptible to the disease into 100. And hence, we subtract the primary case from both the numerator and the denominator and from the denominator, the number of those who were immunized or were otherwise not susceptible to the disease are subtracted. This is because we measure the infectious power of the agent which caused the epidemic. Prevalence. Prevalence refers to all the cases whether old or new existing at a given point of time or during a period of time in the given population. The definition of prevalence is the total number of all the individuals who have an attribute or disease at a particular time or during a particular time period divided by the population at risk at that time or mid interval population. Prevalence is of two types, point prevalence and period prevalence. Point prevalence. It is the number of all the current cases, old or new, of the disease at present at one point of time in a defined population at that point in time. The point in time can range from a day to several days to week or even month depending upon the time that is required to examine the entire population. The prevalence formula is, point prevalence formula is number of all the current cases of the specified disease at a given point in time divided by the estimated population at the same point in time into 1000. Period prevalence counts the number of all the current cases existing at any time during the defined period of time in relation to the defined population at the mid interval. It includes cases which arose before the time period but extended into the year or which arose before extended through the year to the next year and those cases which started during the given year. The formula of period prevalence is the number of existing cases during this time period divided by the mid interval population at risk into 1000. Let's do a small exercise for understanding the concepts of incidence, point prevalence and period prevalence. The first line represents the beginning of an year that is 1st January and the second line represents the end of the year that is 31st December. The dots represent beginning of the case and the tails represent the duration of the disease. Now you shall enumerate the cases that will be considered for calculation of various indices. You will be given 2 seconds after which the answer shall appear next to the question. 
first enumerate the cases for calculation of incidence for the entire year. Now enumerate the cases for calculation of point prevalence on 1st of Jan. Cases for point prevalence on 31st of December. Cases for calculation of period prevalence for the year. Why do we need to know the incidence and prevalence separately? Because they have different significance and different uses which we shall discuss in the following slides. Uses of incidence. Incidence gives the actual rate of the fresh occurrence of the disease in the this, in this specified population and hence can be used as the indicator of health services. Because as the health services for a particular disease improve, the incidence would be the first thing to go down. The prevalence may or may not go down immediately, especially if the disease is a chronic one. Hence, incidence is a more sensitive measure of the effectiveness of the control measures. If the incidence is increasing despite the control measures, the services may need attention. Incidence is useful in research for identifying the risk factors and causes of the disease. Measuring incidence between two groups, comparing the incidence between two groups can identify risk factors and measuring incidence among exposed and non-exposed will give the relative risk for each risk factor. And incidence is also useful in checking for efficacy of a therapeutic or preventive measure. For example, incidence of disease among vaccinated compared with the incidence of disease among non-vaccinated will tell you about the efficacy of the vaccine. Also, incidence of complications or side effects in the treated group versus the incidence of side effects in the control group will give a measure of the side effects of the therapeutic agent. Uses of prevalence. It measures the magnitude of the disease load in the population and hence helps in prioritizing the health problems of the population under study. For example, high magnitudes of tuberculosis, leprosy, malaria in our country have made the government give high priority to these diseases and we have national programs for the control of these diseases. Also, no country can have control measures for all the diseases that affect mankind. Hence, we need to prioritize the health problems for instituting the health services. Prevalence rates are needed for planning, establishing and evaluating the health services like the number of beds, number of doctors, nurses, etc. That is for administrative, for administrative purposes, prevalence rates are required. For planning, if you take only incidence in account for planning the health services, you may be less than adequately prepared to control the disease. For example, if you have a clinical leprosy endemic area and the measures have decreased the incidence 2.01 per thousand population. If you go by this incidence rate, you will give very few medicines for leprosy at your clinic. When old patients which were diagnosed last year or last or last year come to you, you wouldn't have enough medicines for them. Smart move would be to ascertain the prevalence of leprosy. This will make you aware of the disease load and you will adequately stock yourself with leprosy medicines. Evaluating health services. Measuring prevalence before institution of control measures and after institution of control measures will show if there is any reduction in the prevalence along with the incidence. So prevalence along with incidence helps in evaluation of the health services. Relationship between prevalence and incidence. Prevalence of a disease depends upon two factors, incidence of that disease and the mean duration of the illness. 
represented as prevalence is equal to incidence into duration and uh, this is assuming that the population is stable that is not much migration is occurring into or out of the population and that the incidence and mean duration during that year remains unchanged. For example, tuberculosis has a long duration and hence the prevalence of tuberculosis is much more than the incidence of tuberculosis. On the other hand, food poisoning has a short duration and hence the incidence of food poisoning is much more than the prevalence of food poisoning. If an improvement in treatment prevents death but does not cure the disease, it will paradoxically increase the prevalence of the disease. But if the new treatment leads to rapid recovery, the prevalence will decrease even if the incidence does not change. The relationship has been explained by the famous example of tap and a sink. The water that the tap adds into the sink has been likened to the incidence of the disease and the drainage of the sink has been likened to the end of illness by recovery or death and the balance between the two decides the prevalence of the disease in the population.